light of life I'll walk till troubling days are done. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. May his grace and his peace be with you. May he fill our hearts with joy. Good morning. Welcome to St. Hilda St. Luke's Anglican Church in St. Thomas, Ontario. I'm Bishop Barry Clark, the pastor here on this beautiful fourth Sunday in Easter. May the third, the birds are singing, the sun is shining, and I hope that many of you, although we can't move around freely as we'd like, have opportunity to sit in gardens or do some gardening, because the tulips in our garden are starting to blossom and bloom and the flowers are showing forth, along with the weeds naturally, which are harder to dig out, but all together they're part of the beauty of God's creation. This is, the, as I said, the fourth Sunday in Lent, known as Good Shepherd Sunday, and we will hear passages of scripture that make reference to God as shepherd as Jesus as the Good Shepherd. Let us pray. O God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make us perfect in every good work to do your will and work in us that which is well-pleasing in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The first reading is a familiar passage from the Psalms, Psalm 23. And I'm going to read it from the King James Version. Now, I had to memorize this psalm when I was a child in elementary school. In the Montreal Protestant school system, we did have a Bible reading at the beginning of each day, along with a hymn that we could choose, and then we sang God Save the Queen, so I'm telling you a bit about my, myself and my age, and also uh, the Lord's Prayer. Now there's a big question about uh, bringing prayer back into schools. Well, my concern about bringing prayer back into schools, what religious tradition do you use? when our, our communities are no longer uh, defined by uh, a certain homogeneous group, but more importantly, uh, is, is far more culturally diverse with a varieties of religious backgrounds. I would rather that we teach religion in school in a way that students learn about other faith traditions and learn that in all these faith traditions, there are some commonalities, and those commonalities begin to speak about uh, the Holy One, the Divine, but also about how we live our lives in relationship to our understanding of God. And one uh, professor of pedagogy has highlighted the importance of teaching religion in schools is to have us grow for a deeper respect of our, our, our cultural diversity within which we live, so, so students, and we pray as adults, we begin to, to have deeper respect for one another as we strive to make the world in which we live a more important place of peace, justice, and love. So the 23rd Psalm, I'm going to read from the King James Version, or as many have said, the St. James Version of the Bible. Well, here's the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. And he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy, sta thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, 
and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now you might think it's strange that I would pick out the King James version of the 23rd Psalm. Well, that's what I had to memorize. But more importantly, it's, it's a familiar uh, psalm to so many people that brings comfort and joy. It's a psalm that many people have at a funeral. Many people have that, this psalm because it really speaks of God's providential care for all of us. And as, as we hear these words, we, I'm reminded that there's, there's a piece about that assurance that God is with us, that, that a victory of Christ who says, I am the good shepherd and I know my sheep. I call my sheep by name and they follow me and I offer them life. It's really courageous of any of us to depend on God. It's, I say it's courageous because we are a, a culture and a society that is far more engaged with the world around us and the attractiveness of the advertising, the attractiveness of I want this, I need that, and this consumer society envelops all of us. And here the psalmist is inviting us to look at it from a different perspective, to recognize that God, our dependence upon God provides our daily needs, that there is really no fear. And for me, John has said that perfect love casts out all fear. And if that's true, John is writing about the importance of, of God's love for each and every one of us, for each and every part of, of creation, where the Spirit of God moves in all of creation. There's also something more significant about this psalm that gets lost. And the peace at the end, I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The idea of going up into the temple to be with the people of God makes this psalm a community psalm, not just for individual meditation and contemplation and comfort, but it's a community psalm where people gather in the house of the Lord, where they gather in the house of the Lord to be deeply aware of our commitment to one another. And I pray that, that this day will happen when we can gather once again in this wonderful sacred space and sing God's praises in unity and pray together and receive the sacrament. But that doesn't mean that where you are, sitting in your backyard or on your sofa or wherever, that you can't pray for the needs of the world, that you can't pray for one another. Maybe a phone call, perhaps a note, a text message, Facebook, whatever form of social media we use today can be outreach to our community. So I turn to John's Gospel for a moment. And Jesus said it book again. I assure you that I am the gate of the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and outlaws, but the sheep didn't listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief enters only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came so that they could have life indeed, so that they could live life to the fullest. This fullness of life or the abundance of life that Jesus offers is, is that invitation to actually place that faith that God is at work working in us, always that which is well pleasing. As many of you know, we have three dogs, Lily, Maya, and Brittany. 
Lily is a King Charles Spaniel, and Maya and Brittany are uh, a mixture of, of Yorkies and something else. We've never figured that one out. But one of the things we learn from our dogs is that there's that sense of they hear our voice and they come back to us. Not perhaps immediately, but they come back because they know that we provide for them the, the comfort, the food, and they provide us with the joy and, and the, their presence. But there's a, something peculiar about our three dogs. When we let them out of the house without leash, they run across the street immediately to our neighbor. And our neighbors are a wonderful couple, gentle, kind, generous, and in a way the dogs receive treats from them. So they recognize that, that these people are safe for them because they give them treats and they enjoy a treat. It's hard sometimes to get them away because they want their treats. But Pat and Kay are so generous that they, they continue to feed the dogs. What I'm, I'm making here of an analogy is, is that God knows us by name, calls us by name. We are God's children. And God calls us in a way that is loving, kind, and gentle. We may not hear it through the ears. We may not hear God's call through uh, a mind, but we can hear God's call through our heart our intuition through the beauty of creation all around us, and we can hear God speak God's word to us. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, and he restores my soul. God is restoring that which has been destroyed by bacteria and virus. And how is God doing that? God is working through the ways of creative medicine, through the talents and gifts and the perseverance of our medical people. And so we continue to pray and uphold them. And our memorial candle continues to be lit to remember all those who have lost their life because of the COVID virus. Let us pray. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. Let us ask the Lord for a day of fulfillment and peace. Lord, have mercy. Let us ask the Lord to teach us to love others as he has loved us. Lord, have mercy. Let us ask the Lord for peace and justice and healing in the world. Lord, have mercy. Let us ask the Lord to strengthen and relieve those who are in need. Lord, have mercy. Let us ask the Lord to renew the church through the power of his life-giving spirit, remembering the shepherds within our church, the lay leaders, the clergy, the bishops, and today we uphold in our care the shepherding of Bishop Todd, Archbishop Linda, Archbishop Anne, Bishop Martinez, Archbishop Mark McDonald, Bishop Susan Johnson, Archbishop Justin Welby, Pope Francis, and all the patriarchs of the East. We pray for the servant leaders, the shepherds in this, our community of St. Hilda's and St. Luke's. Lord, have mercy. Father of light, yours is the morning and yours is the evening. Let Christ, the Son of Righteousness, 
shine forever in our hearts and draw us to that light where you live in radiant glory. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And a Celtic benediction. May the light of God illumine the heart of your soul. May the flame of Christ kindle you to love. May the fire of the Spirit free you to live this day, this night, and forever. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and with all those whom you care for and love this day and always. Amen. You'll notice I brought some friends to church this morning. My sheep, not representing you this morning, the sheep, uh, as a reminder that Jesus, the Good Shepherd, and, and clergy are called to be shepherds, and especially bishops. So I'm delighted to be here in this role with you at St. Hilda's and St. Luke's as shepherding and working together with you. And we remember those who particularly have wonderful news in their lives about birthdays and anniversaries and significant other events. We pray God's blessings upon you this day and the days to come. And we look forward with anticipation that we'll be together soon. Have a good day. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, brothers and sisters. Thank you.